Hello and welcome to All Knit If I Want To. I'm Andrea Mowry of Dre Renee Knits and this is a little weekly podcast where I try my best to answer some of your questions. Today I am wearing my brand new released pattern. This is the Melt Shawl. I named it that because of a couple things. So if you've knit any of my shawls before then you might know that I love to combine texture and color and like a little bit of relaxation with a little bit, ooh, I gotta think about this section a little bit more. So that's why I love to combine things like garter stitch and brioche, which this shawl sports both. But I also threw in stripes and some lace just to add in all kinds of texture. And these colors, I love like a minty blue and a poppy orangish red. So I was so excited to combine these colors from Explorer Knits with this color which is called fairy dust this gray it has these beautiful little speckles in it and if you look there's actually this super similar colors to my poppy red and minty blue and that's dyed up by lola bean yarn co so as i was looking at these colors it just made me think of like frigid icy glacier <laughs> kind of waters um it reminds me of some of the rivers in montana or even more so glacier is it called a glacier bay or no glacier lagoon in iceland that we went and visited and the water is literally that color i mean it's wild it's this amazing aqua color so i was kind of thinking about like the cold and then i was thinking about poppies are my birth flower and they're that lovely red and it comes out in august and so i was just thinking about like the seasons and thawing and heat and all those things and i was then thinking about that in terms of working on a shawl it's really lovely to wear shawls especially i mean they're great all year round i think no matter where you live because even if you live in a really warm climate there is frigid air conditioning every store or movie theater or what have you that you go into so it's always nice to be able to have something that you can throw over your shoulders um, when you go from being really hot outside to freezing your butt off inside um but so i was just thinking about those transitions from season to season and while I love to wear shawls all year long, I find them especially helpful in spring and fall during those transition seasons where maybe a full on jacket is just a little too much, but a shawl is just right. Um, and then I also was thinking about the transitions from stitch pattern to stitch pattern along going with like that seasonality. So the simple relaxing garter stitch with just a few stripes thrown in to the more, mm, gotta think about it, brioche section, and then also the lace section. So the lace appears within the body of the shawl in just one color, and then it is what finishes off the border of the shawl, getting to use all three colors. So, that's the melt shawl. It is available in my Ravelry shop and on my website. And of course, I'll link to those below. Uh, anything else you need to know? It would be a great shawl to knit during our DRK March to May Knit Along, which is going on right now. You have till May 31st to whip one up. It comes in two different sizes, all the good stuff. So you can find it all on the pattern pages, which I'll link. And let's go ahead and dive into some questions. Oh, I'm also today wearing my Wilder gown again. I love when I remember something in my closet that I haven't worn for a while, so now it's getting all the wear. I also, I don't know about you, maybe it's spring approaching. Maybe it's May coming up in a month and a half and me made May. I don't know what it is, but springtime tends to be the time that I always want to sew again. So it kind of goes dormant for me for you know half the year i just don't tend to have an interest unless there's a pattern that really snags my attention but i tend to be occupied by my other crafts and then spring comes around and i'm like oh my gosh i want to sew everything so it's been fun to pull out one of my previous sews and get lots of wear out of it and i already have i actually 
as a little treat to myself the other day when I released the pattern I was like okay I just got my pattern release done so now I'm gonna gift myself like half an hour to cut out the fabric for this pair of pants I've been wanting to do since November in November I tried on this pair of pants that I loved but they did not fit right and I was like you know what I can make these I can do it so I'm so excited. I'm basically just gonna use my berry pants that I love. And the pants I tried on basically have one black leg and one white leg. And they were so stinking cute. So anyways, I finally got fabric. I actually bought fabric that did not work. It was way too light. I It's hard to buy fabric online, right? Because you can't touch it. I, I don't know enough about fabric. I'm still feel like such a novice as far as sewing and fabric goes. So I'm always like, fingers crossed but the first stuff I bought the white was gonna be totally see-through it'll make a lovely top so it's fine and thankfully the bob pants don't usually use a ton of yardage so um I'm okay switching gears with that and using it for a top or a dress would probably be fine um but then I found I think it's oh it was hemp is it hemp twill I don't know I know there's some hemp in it and I got it from U Fibers and this is, it's still a little, the opacity is still a little like, ee. gonna have to be careful with my underwear choice, but I think it's gonna work out and I'm really excited. So I cut that out yesterday. I'll definitely show y'all once I get them sewn up. Okay. I just had another thought that I'll just share quickly. So we decided yesterday via my Instagram stories that we are going to start the next 100 day challenge on April 1st. So we just finished up the 100 days of spindle spinning, which was so amazing, so much fun. And I know I'm really excited. And from what I've heard from y'all, you're really excited to try another one. I actually have an idea for three. I mean, I have lots of ideas for future ones, but I don't know, maybe it'll be too crazy, but I'm kind of kicking off three at one time all on April 1st because they all hit a different craft. So what do you think? Is that wild? I mean, you obviously don't have to participate in all three, but I kind of thought, well, I would like to do all three. One of them I already do. So it's kind of a, a freebie for me, but I thought it would be great to just make sure that everyone's craft love gets tapped on. Um, one's going to stick with spinning and then another one's another craft. So I'm thinking about it. Let me know. Let me know if it's too wild. Should I just stretch them out? Why do we have to do them all at once? I don't know. That's just the way I am. So, okay. Whew, let's get into some questions already. But think about it. Think about it. And let me know what you think. All right. Question number one. I'm excited to join in for your most recent knit alongs and plan to knit the traveler shell. My family and I are doing a lot of traveling this summer and I think it would be the perfect garment to bring. I agree. It's going to be so travel friendly because it's so easy to pull on and off. It's great for layering. It won't take up a ton of suitcase space. You can dress it up, dress it down. Anyways, let's keep going. Um, due to budgeting for this trip, I am knitting only from stash. Yay! Way to stash down. I have the Surrey Alpaca Silk Lace Weight, but the other yarn I am using is labeled as Sport by the manufacturer. I think it's more towards the heavy fingering side. I got gauge with these yarns, yay! But the fabric seems a bit dense, as you might imagine, though springy and with some drape. Not having seen a sample of the garment worked up in the pattern weight yarns, I am wondering what sort of fabric it was intended to be when you designed it. I don't mind changing needles to... Sorry. I don't mind changing needle sizes to achieve the desired fabric density and then working with the gauge that produces, but any guidance you could give would be greatly appreciated. So, I would be hesitant for that substitute because what I used was two lace weight yarns. So really your, you could almost use your fingering, your heavy fingering slash sport weight by itself for that pattern. Um, holding it together with the lace weight Surrey alpaca, I mean, that's really probably gonna push you. So here's the thing with Surrey alpaca, that lovely, lovely fuzzy yarn that, woo, I love so much. It blooms like no other. So you can really push Surrey alpaca 
I mean, depending on what size nails you knit that up on, you could almost push that combo of a sport plus a surreal alpaca to like a DK weight, maybe even a worsted as your finished yarn weight that you could use it for. So that to me sounds too heavy for the traveler shell. Now, that being said, if you like the fabric, that's fine. I would consider how that extra weight is going to affect your row gauge. I have a feeling that once that fabric is more more larger once that fabric is the size of your finished sweater and weighs more because you're using a heavier yarn it could pull down on that row gauge more so it might grow a little more than expected so i would definitely take that into consideration um there are times when i love structure in a garment where i want it to have a certain amount of oomph to it i actually don't love too much drape in a garment it just doesn't tend to feel good on my body so i don't mind some oomph and if you like the oomph and you keep an eye on that row gauge you could do that substitute but i would just go into it knowing you definitely will have a denser fabric than how i knit mine um as far as i really wish i had that up here so i could kind of like do a little um it does have some different decent drape it is lightweight i mean again i used two lace weight yarns so your sport weight would be like two to three strands of my lace weight held together if that kind of helps visualize that substitute um so a couple options one look for a different yarn don't use your sport weight two you do you push that gauge if you like it and that you like that structure great three consider using just the sport weight by itself and seeing if you get gauge and how you like that fabric it would not hurt to do a gauge swatch to compare it to the gauge swatch you've already done do one with just the sport and see what you think and if you like it um and now I'm just going to throw a wild idea out there of how much of that cereal alpaca do you have? Or do you have some in another color? You could maybe try holding two strands of the surrey together. It'd be beautiful. It's like a marl. And doing just a cereal alpaca shell. It could be really cute. But check that gauge because, again, that cereal alpaca blooms. So, for instance, I have a new sweater coming out next month. And I knit up two versions. And one is in just Surrey alpaca and the other is in two strands held together and I'll talk more about this once I release it but the results and how I had to substitute for that were unexpected and a little tricky um I did make it work this isn't that helpful to share I'm realizing because I'm not giving you super strong details I think I already gave you the information that is helpful so I'll stop there instead of going into a random tangent where everyone's just like Hey, Andrea. <laughs> All right. So yeah, those are the, like a couple ideas for you and good luck. All right. Question number two, I am knitting. Oh, I am excited to knit your new meld shawl, but brioche is not my thing. I'm curious if it's possible to substitute half fisherman's rib, which I love. I don't know if they are interchangeable. I imagine I need to go down in needle size, but not sure if this would overcomplicate things. I look forward to your video podcast every week. Thank you so much. Okay, so here's the thing. I, I picked this question because I've actually had this question come through via email on Instagram a few times since releasing the shawl. There's a number of people that were like, can I just do Fisherman's Rib? You, Fisherman's Rib and Brioche, create an incredibly similar fabric to each other. Where they are less similar is in shaping and in how you can play with color. So with these little sections of brioche, I guess I could hold it up closer. All right these little tiny sections. So first, let me let me say this. Give Brioche a chance. <laughs> these are only little six six row sections. Look at little little bitty sections. Um 
and you never know. I have lots of tutorials for brioche. They're linked in the pattern. You can also just check them out right here on my YouTube channel. There's an entire brioche playlist. So maybe give brioche a chance. This would be such a good shawl for practicing your brioche because it's just these little bands. Look at, you're only gonna do it. Depending on the size, you're only gonna do it six times. I can't remember how many times you do it in the large, in the larger shawl, maybe nine times. I think it's once more per section. So it's only a little bit, but if you do really want to trade it out, I just wanted to show back and forth, that's why. So here's the side with the main color and then contrast. So with, so I, first of all, I would not trade half fisherman's rib for brioche, but you could try full on fisherman's rib. They're worked a little bit differently than each other. In half fisherman's rib, kind of like half brioche, you're only doing the fisherman's rib or the brioche technique on one side of your work. I love half, fish, half fisherman's rib. I used it in the inclination shawl, the inclinations cowl, the birch pullover, and the striat cardigan, and the striat hat. So I love that stitch, but it is not the same on both sides of your fabric. One side looks kind of squashy, while the other side looks more like traditional brioche. So if you're gonna swap out, swap out for full on fisherman's rib would be my recommendation. Also, I have not done Wait a minute. Oh my goodness. Have I? Hold on. All right, I'm gonna pull something up while I'm chatting. I don't think I have done two color fisherman's rib, but I wanna make sure I'm not a lying liar who lies. There's only one pattern that I could have done it in. And so I'm gonna pull that up, I'm gonna look, but I know it can be done. And to me, it looks really similar. So if you're really color, maybe you're sitting here going like, girl, I know my fisherman's rib and I've done it in two color and great. You are gonna swap in your fisherman's rib increases for the decreases, they're similar enough that it will be fine. Okay, let me just take a little peeky. Oh, I used half. And two color. Okay, I don't. Okay, now I remember what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I was thinking of my Atun shawl, which I use two color brioche, and I use half fisherman's rib in that shawl. And I was like, wait, did I do two color fisherman's rib? I didn't. Um, but I, oh, why am I closing this? I still think this for questions. Okay, so I did look up for you a link to a tutorial for two color fisherman's rib. So if you wanna sub that in, I'm gonna link it below. I'm gonna be real honest, I didn't watch the tutorial, but um, it looked good from the quick scan I did, and it's at least one spot to start. All I did was search two color fisherman's rib, loads came up. Um, so that's the only thing, I haven't done it myself. I like to do brioche when I'm using more than one color or when I'm doing like fun shaping, that's when I'm gonna default to brioche. So I say, try it, you know? The first brioche section is right here, right? Just a little baby. So all you have to do is work up to here, try your fisherman's rib sub, see if it works. If you like it, sweet. You only did this little bit, now you know. If you don't like it, tear it back and try the brioche. I want everyone to do brioche, but I get it. We all like what we like and you should choose the technique that is going to bring you the most joy. This is upside down. I knew that didn't feel right. Okay. So there we go. I got you a link. All right. Quick little sewing question. As I said, I'm really excited about sewing again. So Thank you for sharing your sewing, your sources for sewing patterns. My biggest hurdle is that I have no access to fabric stores. Do you use online resources for fabric and notions? So yes, where I used to live, we only had quilting shops and you can use whatever you want to use to sew, but it's really nice to try and find access to garment fabric. So I am linking 
my places that I myself have shopped at online for fabric and had really great experiences with. Um, one, so first let's talk about my local, which is Z Fabric here in Portland, Maine. They do have an online store. Um, so that would be a great option. I also love U Fibers. So U Fibers does this thing called Make the Look where they bundle together everything you need to make a pattern. Um, they change over, so they'll just do like a group and once they've sold out, they've sold out. But I did the Arthur pants through that and I loved it because it came with my thread, the needle for my sewing machine, the fabric, the interfacing, the button, the zipper, everything. So I was like, okay, I know exactly that I have everything because that's where I get overwhelmed because I still don't fully feel like I have a ton of knowledge on fabric and even zippers and things like that. I love that everything I need, they're putting in there and I just know, okay, this is gonna work. Um, so I love that one. Um, Oak Fabrics has a wide selection that I have really liked. Like if you like like Merchant and Mills or anything like that, their selection is excellent. They're in Chicago, um, but I have shopped from them online. Another is Fancy Tiger Crafts, which is great for lots of crafting supplies, fabric, yarn, all the good stuff. Um, so that's a really great one. And then Blackbird Fabrics is one that I found actually through their sewing podcast. Where's I'm gonna forget the name of their sewing podcast. If you just search sewing podcast, it'll be like the first one that comes up. Um, but that's really fun, especially if you're getting into sewing, they have so many great tips and tricks. So Blackbird Fabrics is a great one. Um, I'll also mention there's the Matchy Matchy Sewing Club. This is the only one I have not purchased fabric through. Um, I have one of their patterns, which is actually one of the ones I'm going to do soon. Um, but they, their fabric looks really great. I just haven't tried it out yet. So, um, I'll add that one. There was one more I was just thinking of that I've gotten fabric through. Anyways, I also thought this would be a good crowdsourcing one, especially since I am a sewing novice. If any of y'all are watching and you're like, oh my gosh, this place is so great for buying fabric. Oh, Sister Mountain. That is one I have not purchased from them, but I know a lot of people who've had and they've had great experiences. I just haven't had a chance to check them out yet. So I'm gonna link that one too, because I always hear good things about them. Um, but if anybody else has some great online sewing fabric resources, let us know and throw a link in the comments. Um, if I think of any more before this goes live, I'll add them too, because it's so helpful. I actually think a lot about when I first started knitting and trying to understand yarn that was called for in a pattern and just being like, I don't know what any of this is. And I remember the first time I walked into like a local yarn shop, we actually had a lot of them back in my old hometown. And one of the ones that has since closed down um, was really intimidating. It was really big. And they had all kinds of like European yarns, all kinds of, and I just had no idea what I was looking at. Then I went into another local that was so great. The owner was so friendly. It was much smaller. And she like immediately was just like, helped me get what I needed. Um, so it is really, really nice being able to go into a shop, especially because you can get help. But I think that these sites all do a great job with their fabric at describing it and everything like that. Um, but yeah, isn't it wild trying to learn all the things? I would love to know more about fabric. It's That's a hard one for me. Like this Wilder gown, I would love to do it in, I would love to make another one in maybe kind of a fun, I don't know, like a sheer fabric to wear over something else. But I'm like, I don't even know how to go about buying that. Would it be too hard to sew with? I just don't know. So I'm learning, slowly but surely. All right. I have only been crocheting for a few years, but really want to learn to knit socks and have always preferred the fabric that knitting creates over crochet. My question would be, what do you think would be the best patterns for an absolute beginner? I do have a wonderful fiber arts group at our library and attend the weekly get together. So I do have the encouragement and help from some ladies there. 
just a smidge overwhelmed by all the gorgeous patterns on Pinterest and Ravelry. So my first thought was, have you tried knitting or would this be your first foray into knitting? If it is your first foray into knitting, I don't think socks are a bad place to start, but I would consider starting with a hat. Um, I think a hat is a nice place to start because it's a project you can finish. It's not a super big project. It's not a scarf that you can get. Some people get really bored. Like we almost all start with a scarf or dishcloths. And sometimes with scarves we get kind of bored because it's just the same thing forever. Um, so nats, nats, hats are really great because they teach us how to work in the round, um, how to knit and purl, how to decrease, how to cast on. So they're a great place to start. And I think if you did that, then that would probably give you the confidence to then try socks. If you're like brand new, as far as a sock pattern, if you go on your preferred place to find patterns, such as Ravelry, I would recommend searching vanilla sock. So that is, you're going to find some basic, great, trusted recipes. You can look at how many people have made them. Um, I would also ask your local ladies that you gather with and see if they have a go-to sock. Because if they do, if you get stuck along the way, they could also offer you some help. If, because the trickiest part's probably gonna be the heel. That's where we have to create a gusset to fit our heel. Otherwise we could just knit a straight tube. Um, but, if they've already knitted, then they might be able to help guide you through that part too. So I would look for a vanilla sock pattern, or I would ask your local ladies what their favorite is. Um, but you can totally do it. Oh, the other reason why I would consider starting with a hat over the socks is just needle size. So socks are going to knit on a really small needle. And as your hands are getting used, if, as they're getting that muscle memory and getting used to everything, it might be nice to be on a bigger needle um, than a little bitty one for socks. So there's my thoughts on that. Good luck though and welcome to the knitting club. All right, um, your work inspired me to start spinning, yay. I was wondering if you are doing a combo spin like you showed in episode 157, do you make sure all the colors have the same fiber content? Or could you also combine different fiber contents and spin them up one after the other? So I absolutely, combine fiber contents. I don't even worry about it. <laughs> but that being said, all of my fiber stash is wool or a wool blend. So I don't have any straight like bamboo or 100% alpaca or 100% silk or linen or flax. You know, like I might have some of my braids that have a little of those things blended in, but they're still primarily wool. So I know that they're going to act really similar enough um, within my combo spin to be fine. So I absolutely combine fibers. All right. And I threw in an extra one today because why not? Um, I am going on my first backpacking trip in August to the Pictured Rocks in the UP. I am so jealous. I was actually just talking to my mom about how I want to take my kids up to the UP because I haven't been since I was like 13. So I would love to go back to the UP. So enjoy your trip. Um, I know that it will be warmer during the day, but can still get quite cool at night. I would love to knit something to wear for this trip. It would need to be lightweight and breathable, but also be able to hold in some warmth to ward off that evening chill. I love your pattern, so any recommendations on pattern yarn combos would be greatly appreciated. I recently purchased the Traveler hoodie to make for the March to May knit along, but any other suggestions are welcome. Um, so I love that you're already doing the Traveler hoodie. That would have been probably my first recommendation just because that is what I wore camping all last summer. So we had a lot of camping trips last summer, and it was what I brought on each one, and I loved, I loved having that one with me. But lightweight, breathable, hold in some warmth. I would probably recommend the first two that came to mind were the Weekender and the DRK Everyday Sweater. They're both really, really comfortable and are basically like a hand knit sweatshirt. You could also, um, the, all the Weekender patterns use wool and spun yarns. So as far as yarn choice goes, if you want it to be lightweight and warm, I would go with a woolen yarn. That woolen spun yarn is going to be really light. I have a friend who knit full-size adult sweater and I think it only used 500 grams. 
of her wool and spun yarn, which is not a lot. Um, so you can imagine how light that would be for your backpack. So I would do either the weekender or I would do the DRK everyday sweater knit up in a woolen spun yarn. Those would be, those would be my top choices. Um, they're both great for layering and I wear them constantly. So those are the two that popped into my head. All right. We are smack dab in the middle of the DRK March to May knit along and the Traveler Spin It to Knit It knit along. Those are going to be linked down below for their entirety so that you can always find their link. So if you're ever like, wait, I forgot how to get back, um, just go ahead and look in the show notes anytime from now through the end of May for the DRK March to May knit along or through till next February for the spinning knit along. And you will always find those links both to the Ravelry forum and the hashtags that we use on Instagram. I am um, oh, oh, I'm so glad I just remembered. Where did I put it? Wait, I have to show this. I showed it on Instagram. I know you aren't all on Instagram. And it is something that I've been wanting to show for months. So... This is for my support spindlers out there. I don't know how you keep your bowls on your lap, but I find that they just slide right off of mine, especially when I am rewinding my temporary cup. I don't know what I'm doing differently that makes it be like that's the time it slips, but it just slips every time. So I was traveling back in January and I was like, okay, I know I wanna take my spinning on the plane and I do not wanna to have to worry about a bowl falling off of my lap and so I thought about how I twist on my interchangeable needles and use a little rubber pad I was like I need like a rubber pad so I sent my sweet sweet husband out to go get me a jar opener and I'll tell you what it is the best little sport spindling hack ever so that goes on my leg bowl goes on top and it just keeps it from slipping off of my apparently slippy, slippy clothing. So anyways, grab yourself a jar opener and I promise it will make your support spinning more enjoyable. All right, anything else that we need to share? I don't think so. I think that's everything. That was our questions. We talked about knit alongs. We talked about the new pattern, the 100 days of something coming up i i am going to announce i will definitely announce it here on instagram and in my newsletter uh my newsletter is where it's going to be the most spelled out so if you're somebody who likes like give me the details that's where that's going to happen so definitely sign up for my newsletter um otherwise i think that's it so if you enjoyed this please hit that subscribe and like button that's what I'm supposed to say, I believe, at the end of these. And thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you again next week. You can submit your questions through the link below. It's at the very end of the show notes. And happy making. Bye.